Hi dear fans, uh, friends and subscribers, welcome this on a Saturday. Normally you know my cricket show on Saturday is a late night cricket show. But yes, uh, well, whenever I find time and I'm free, well, today it's an early cricket show. Well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, welcome. Always uh, very, very, uh, very uh, happy to know that, you know, people are loving the show. People enjoy this cricket show. In fact, one of the bloke uh, yesterday, one of the blokes commented that uh, he also subscribed to my show. So thank you very much, uh, dear bloke. And uh, he actually mentioned that uh, he couldn't actually catch up the match. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, he found my wicket to wicket, uh, my analysis uh, pretty good. Well, I'm glad that I'm able to really, really satisfy you all, dear friends, subscribers, because as I said, you are the wheels of my business. Uh, as, as, uh, I mean, as simply put, it, you are the wheels of my business. So, as long as you love the show, and uh, as long as uh, this cricket show goes on, as I said, it's pure passion flowing from my. Um, uh, uh, from my voice. I mean, I've been gifted uh, this voice. I would say, if at all uh, you people are enjoying my cricket show, I can only thank God for that because He's the one, He's the eternal uh, creator uh, who has actually, uh, you know, He's the one who has actually uh, given this uh, sort of uh, God given talent to me uh, to speak to you daily and uh, really, really entertain you. Well, so let's without further ado uh, get back to cricket here. Now, talking about cricket. Uh, in this cricket show, what you are going to look at, uh, I will continue on that uh, match uh, that yesterday uh, where I left off between South Africa and West Indies. West Indies were given a revised target, as you would remember, of uh, scoring, uh, they, they were supposed to score uh, uh, 229 runs uh, in 33 overs, and then the Duckworth Lewis method came into the picture because of the uh, rain uh, which really spoiled proceedings. Uh, but well, uh, South Africa didn't, uh, even though the time was lost, uh, South Africans uh, didn't even allow West Indies to really, really uh, go for it because uh, they wrapped up the innings, uh, I wouldn't say quickly, but definitely uh, after Chris Gale actually smashing um, a lot of runs, uh, it was a pretty quick work by the South Africans as the West Indies were out for 164 and South Africa won the first uh, one-day international uh, by the Duckworth Lewis method and they lead the, uh, the uh, five-match one-day series 1-0 uh, one now. Now the other thing uh, that I'll be looking at uh, is um, uh, yesterday there was one more, uh, I mean, uh, one game was between South Africa and West Indies where definitely we saw a conclusion to the match even though rain uh, came and spoiled proceedings. Uh, but as far as uh, the game between New Zealand and Sri Lanka were concerned, yesterday was the third one-day international. They had everything to play for. But again, uh, rain was the one which actually prevented uh, the match from uh, really, really uh, uh, getting completed in full. And it was a real uh, disappointment, uh, one could say, at Eden Park in Auckland, as uh, the only one innings was completed, with New Zealand uh, um, uh, making 145 for three of 28.5 overs. And then at six o'clock, we had, uh, I think, uh, there was a, as a there was a lot of rain, and finally uh, the umpires had to actually call off play. So I'll definitely be looking into that match in a brief manner. And well, uh, today, as you know, um, the Tri Series, the Carlton. Uh, mid uh, tri series uh, started with Australia uh, starting off on the right note when they actually uh, beat England uh, pretty comfortably. And uh, now uh, it's the Carlton mid tri series second match which is coming up, uh, and that is between Australia and India. And in Australia, and India have already, uh, I mean, they are renewing their battle, but on a on a different uh, a different uh, surface, one could say, because previously it was Test matches. So now the battle between Australia and India will be for the One Day International. So it will be pretty interesting uh, to see uh, what really happens at the MCG at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Well, so first uh, I'm, I'm definitely taking you down to the first ODI uh, where I'm going to um, you know, continue from where I left off yesterday when I actually winded up my cricket show. Uh, it was West Indies who had set a target, a revised target of 226 runs uh, to win from 32 overs. Well, it was... Um, well, I was talking to you, giving you some cricket commentary. We saw Chris Gale was blasting on all cylinders. He was really, really smacking the ball. He was hitting sixes. He was hitting boundaries. He was going after Dale Steen. But Dale Steen, as you know, what a smart bowler he is. He actually picked up the wicket. As you know, Dale Steen and Gale battle. One would remember in IPL, uh, it was a real treat to watch when uh, Chris Gale was uh, playing for Royal Challengers Bangalore. Uh, and uh, it was Dale Steen at the other end uh, playing, I think, and uh, trying to just... Uh, 
probably my memory is not right here, uh, but he was playing for a certain team and it was a real battle. Gale was able to blast all the other ballers, but Dale Steen and Gale was always a battle between bat and ball. But while uh, Dale Steen was almost winning the battle there, but today once again Gale, uh, after hitting a boundary of Steen, <coughs> Pettis to Steen, as that was the first to get to go, as Gale was caught by De Villiers of the balling of Dale Steen for 41, of 24 balls with 5 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, the run rate was pretty good. The opening uh, partnership uh, was, uh, had uh, added 51 runs thanks to Gris Gale. You could definitely uh, see what damage uh, Gale had created at the top by smacking 51 runs of only 5.4 overs. So we are looking at 34 deliveries and uh, 51 runs were already scored with Gale um, actually um, was, the, was the prime contributor uh, with a 41, quick fire 41 of 24 deliveries with 5 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, after that, um, once Steen um, picked up Gale's wicket, uh, it was the turn of uh, Vernon Philander uh, to get uh, Leon Johnson out cheaply for a duck. At the other end, Wayne Smith, um, in the company of Gale, uh, was uh, really, really uh, trying to, <coughs> trying to be, sorry, trying to be really, very quiet at the crease because he's, he knows that uh, Chris Gale was the one who was actually attacking, so he really kept it to himself. But when Leon Johnson was out, uh, he was gone, as I said, for a blob. Uh, and then Samuels came in, and uh, 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 Farhan Bahadine at that particular time was really, really fielding well, and then uh, Marlon Samuels was run out by, an, by a very, very good piece of fielding from Farhan Bahadine as he picked up the, uh, picked up the uh, ball and actually threw down at the stumps, and uh, it hit it, and Marlon Samuels was caught off the crease, and he had to walk back to the pavilion, run out for 12 of 16 deliveries, 1-6, 85 for there, but Dwayne Smith was still there, and Dwayne Smith, uh, uh, today he was uh, not uh, really, really trying to attack. Uh, he was really uh, playing. He, he knew that there were three wickets gone. Uh, he had a responsibility on his shoulders. But uh, unfortunately for him, uh, Imran Tahir, uh, the le le leggy, actually picked up his wicket when Dwayne Smith was LBW bowled Tahir for 29 of 38 balls with three fours. And suddenly the West Indians, who were t chasing a revised target of 226 runs to win from 32 overs, found themselves in deep trouble at 89 for 4. Uh, Jonathan Carter, uh, there were two new batsmen at the crease at the time with uh, Dinesh Ramadan, the uh, captain of the, uh, Dinesh Ramadan there uh, along with uh, Jonathan Carter. Now Jonathan Carter was actually making his debut and Jonathan Carter has scored lots of runs in the West Indian domestic uh, championships and uh, he was getting an opportunity here. Jonathan Carter, I thought he was, uh, he was good. I mean he was not able to really force the pace uh, but he was trying to give company to Ramadin and that, at that particular time uh, what was uh, more important was to someone to actually stay at the crease because you need some, uh, need some sort of stability as far as the West Indian batting was concerned. But uh, for them, well, uh, there, there was a partnership. Uh, it really didn't deal much. 29 runs were added. Jonathan Carter uh, hit some uh, nice boundaries but then um, Imran Tahir uh, had Jonathan Carter stumped as Jonathan Carter left his crease trying to loft Imran Tahir and De Villiers whipped off the bales and Jonathan Carter was out, out for 17 of 36 balls with three fours which made the score 118 for wine, one by, uh, 18 for five but Dinesh Ramadan was joined in by Dan and Sammy and as you know West Indies uh, have a lot of batting left in the tank uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, today it was not the case. Uh, Dan and Sammy went uh, caught by De Villiers of the balling of Philander for four and then Andre Russell uh, hit, um, I mean, he really started off uh, in a breezy fashion uh, by slamming 19 of 8 balls with 1, 4 and 2 sixes. But again, uh, it was an identical dismissal as of Sammy, as Andre Russell was caught by De Villiers of the balling of Philander for 19. Uh, it's not made 148 for 7, but West Indies still had hope with uh, Dinesh Ramadan hanging on there as he was join, uh, joined in by the new captain, Jason Holder. But then Dinesh Ramadan, uh, after doing all the hard work, making 31 of 32, the two fours was gone as he was clean bowled by uh, Imran Tahir uh, for 31. That made it 8 for 161. And then Jason Holder uh, was left with the tail uh, to see whether he could actually uh, do something out of the ordinary. But well, he definitely couldn't do much as uh, Steen came in uh, and uh, wrapped up the tail by first uh, getting Jason Holder caught by Miller for two. And then he also went on to claim the wicket of uh, Jeremy T uh, Jer Jerome Taylor. Caught by De Villiers of the balling of Steen for two and Ben was not out on not and West Indies were all out for 164. They couldn't even play their full quota. 28.2 overs. Uh, they were uh, actually uh, bowled out. Uh, just sad. 
as far as the ball was concerned and uh, thus uh, South Africa actually won the match with the Duckworth Lewis method uh, by 61 runs and looking at the bowling figures as far as the South, African, uh, South Africans were concerned Philander bowled as uh, was costly, uh, Philander was um, really taken apart by Chris Gale uh, when, when the innings started for the West Indies 6 overs no made in 44 runs and 3 wickets, he came back after Gale's dismissal uh, Markle 5 overs so went for 36 Dale Sweeney 5.2 overs, 1 minute and 27 runs and 3 wickets to so look pretty good. Uh, Dimini, also I, I thought the spinners uh, did a fine job there because uh, the throttling was done by the spinners. Uh, the wickets were going and then, you know, once uh, the wickets were going, uh, the West Indies found themselves in trouble and the spinners uh, really came in and started throttling. Uh, that really, really piled on the pressure of the West Indies uh, and that was the reason uh, that West Indies uh, were all out 164. As Dimini, uh, bowling uh, very nicely, 6 overs, none for 25, Iman Tahir did his job, 6 overs, no made in 30 runs and 3 wickets and Abdi Villiers of um, South Africa was actually uh, named uh, man of the match uh, for his uh, highest score of 81. So South Africa taking a 1 in lead in this uh, 5 match uh, 1 day series uh, between West Indies and South Africa. Uh, so now there will be the second 1 day international which is coming up. I'm not going to do a preview but the second 1 day international probably is coming up tomorrow. Uh, if my uh, if I'm right here, well, from here uh, let's uh, get off onto the match between uh, New Zealand and Sri Lanka. Now, as I said, yesterday was the third one uh, third one day international which was being played. Both the teams were level at 1-1. Uh, it was a good toss to win, and the toss was won by the Sri Lankans. So Sri Lankans, seeing the conditions were a bit cloudy, and Eden Park in Auckland normally, as you know, it favours the pace bowlers. There is something in it uh, for the uh, for the pace bowlers. We started with uh, Sri Lanka actually winning the toss and uh, Angelo Matthews deciding to insert the New Zealanders into bat. Well, uh, he inserted them into bat but uh, they were in for some uh, real caning at the hands of Brendan McCallum as uh, Brendan McCallum and Martin Guptill. Martin Guptill, there was a sort of a focus on Martin Guptill uh, because Martin Guptill was in the, as far as his form was concerned, uh, he has been, he was looking a bit shaky and the opening start has not been something uh, which has been forthcoming for New Zealand. But today, Martin Guptill and Brendan McClum, but uh, well, let me tell you, uh, Martin M M McClum was the one who was doing all the scoring as Martin Guptill was trying to settle himself uh, to get into some form here. So Brendan McClum and Martin Guptill start with uh, Brendan McClum going uh, really aerial uh, right from the word go as he first deposited Kulashekar into the banks uh, for a sex, then he turned his attention down to Damika Prasad and also sent him for a sex. And uh, Brendan McClum had hit two fours and two sixes and he had raised to 28 uh, of just 22 deliveries and he had taken the New Zealand innings to 40 uh, at the end of 7.1 uh, seven, uh, overs. But that was the time Angelo Matthews, the Sri Lankan captain, struck uh, when Brendan McClum uh, was uh, trying to hike uh, Matthews uh, through the mid-wicket region uh, but he only ended up, uh, um, you know, uh, ended up uh, sending the ball soaring into the skies as Kulashekra settled down nicely to take the catch and McCallum was walking back to the pavilion after making 28 of 22 deliveries, two fours and two sixes. So that made the score 40 for one and then Tom Latham came in to join um, Guptill uh, and both of them uh, started uh, really settling down. Uh, they were not taking much risk and they knew that uh, they had a job to do. They, uh, they were really, really trying to play well and also we saw the bowling was uh, suddenly getting good. Uh, after um, Kulashekra, after Brendan McClum's dismissal, as Angelo Matthews and Sinan Aike uh, started bowling in the right areas, and they were the ones who were really making an impression here uh, against the New Zealanders, with Brendan McClum and Tom Latham uh, really settling down uh, to really, really uh, start nurturing the innings. Uh, well, they were doing it uh, pretty nicely, and they had added uh, 99 runs, and that was the time we saw that Martin Guptill was uh, slowly gaining in confidence because said he was. Uh, his form has been looking pretty shaky. Uh, he started slowly gaining the confidence uh, as once again we saw this Martin Guptill. As you know, Martin Guptill plays straight uh, and his uh, favorite area is to drive down the wicket. Uh, the long off and long on is his, are his favorite strokes. But when we, have, uh, we have seen uh, that he definitely likes to play those uh, uh, straight shots and uh, he plays it pretty straight. And it was good to watch uh, Martin Guptill uh, getting into the groove uh, as he deposited uh, the spinners of Tisra Pereira for some uh, big sixes and also uh, he was uh, really doing a good job. Tom Latham on the other hand was uh, really settling down. He was uh, really allowing Martin Guptill to really play himself into some form there. Uh, but as I said, there was some very good runs being added. 99 runs were added uh, for the second wicket. And then Angelo Matthews once again came in 
uh, as he produced a very good off cutter uh, which cut into Latham and Latham was gone, bowled by Matthews of 42 of 65 deliveries, four fours and the score at 139 for two but uh, definitely Guptill and Latham had done a fine job here uh, to see to it uh, that uh, New Zealand were really really uh, looking, uh, the, the picture was looking pretty good at 139 for two in the 27th over. After that, Ross Taylor came in and joined Martin Gaptil. Martin Gaptil had uh, already uh, was looking good. He was not out. He was batting on 66 of 78 deliveries with four fours and three sixes as uh, Ross Taylor strode uh, stro in. But Ross Taylor, as I said, Angelo Matthews was bowling superbly today, uh, and the captain um, uh, nipped the wicket of Ross Taylor uh, with a ball where uh, probably Ross Taylor felt a bit hard done by, uh, but uh, the ball really swung in, uh, and Ross Taylor was LBW. Uh, bowl Matthews for the event for the went for the review and out came the review saying that Taylor was out. Taylor was absolutely uh, not probably happy. He probably thought the ball was sailing over the stumps. Uh, but uh, when you saw the angle and we, when we saw the stump camera actually uh, really really putting it on the uh, television uh, replay, we saw that Ross Taylor was absolutely out. The ball was hitting the stumps. Ross Taylor had to go LBW bowl Matthews for three and New Zealand were 145 for three. And that was the time the rain started pouring in and very unfortunately after that we had no play possible with uh, New Zealand. The match was abandoned as a no result match and the, both the teams stood at 1-1 and when the match was abandoned for rain, the New Zealand scored at 145 for three after 28.5 overs. Martin Guptill uh, would be pretty happy that even though the match uh, really didn't go the old hog, New Zealand would be very happy that Martin Guptill uh, has really hit some good form there. It was unbeaten 66 of 78 deliveries, four fours and three sixes. Uh, and uh, looking at the bowling as far as the Sri Lankans were, uh, were concerned, Kulashekara, six overs for 35. Dhanka Prasad, six overs cost him 30. That was when McCallum was around. Uh, Indra Matthews, as said, was the pick of the bowlers, uh, was really bowling the right areas. He was really taking advantage of the cloudy conditions uh, that was prevailing at Eden Park in Auckland. And this is what uh, Angelo Matthews can do. You give him cloudy conditions, I think Angelo Matthews who really hits the, really uses the scene well, also can swing the ball in the air uh, and off the pitch. And that's what he was precisely doing, uh, making it pretty difficult for the New Zealand batsmen to negotiate him. 6.5 overs, 2 maidens, 21 runs and 3 wickets for his returns. Uh, Shane and Ike also bowled well, 7 overs um, uh, giving away 30 runs. And this Pereira was carved for some runs here, three overs, costing him 24 runs. So this is as far as uh, this particular third one-day international is concerned. Now we would be shifting off to the fourth one-day international between New Zealand and Sri Lanka, which should be coming in shortly, probably next week. Uh, and um, well, so but uh, before I really get to an end to this cricket happening, so, uh, yes, I'll be putting an end to this cricket happening show today uh, by getting on to some very, very good matches coming up uh, in the. Carlton uh, made try series in the Melbourne at MCG where the, the two ODI, um, uh, ODI uh, uh, kingpins, I would say, India and Australia, would be resuming battle. As I said, it is going to be a different battle. Uh, the, the battle was won by Australia uh, when Australia uh, beat India in the series, uh, the Test Series 2-0 uh, with some wonderful performances from their players. Now it's a different kettle of fish, it's a different surface, it's one day cricket. And well, it is going to be a 50 over game and this would be a sort of a dress rehearsal as far as uh, all, the t all the three teams are concerned, uh, as far as the World Cup 2015 are concerned. Now, Australia and India will be clashing in the first one day international in the sense uh, this is the second match of this uh, Carlton mid tri series, Australia and India. And for Australia, well, uh, they, they, are, they are definitely, uh, they have an ace up their sleeve because uh, they have already won their first uh, engagement. Uh, against England uh, pretty comfortably and they did it uh, pretty well. So David Warner, uh, well, he loves the Indian bowling. We see the, we saw that in the Test Series and we also seen that uh, he also loves England as he scored a century. So now uh, the attention would definitely be on David Warner and India would probably thinking uh, that uh, the first and foremost thing that they need to do is dislodge the opening pair of Aaron Finch and David Warner. And Aaron Finch, let me tell you, is such an explosive player but uh, David Warner is the one that the Indians would be really wanting to put a real price on and they would be probably trying to nip his wicket uh, pretty early in the piece. Uh, can they do that? That is going to be very interesting. And then they would be followed by Shane Watson who is in some good form too. Uh, Stephen Smith, you know, he's in some red hot form now. Uh, George Bailey is the captain who's been leading the team, always leads by example. 
I'm glad Maxwell, even though he failed, uh, he's definitely got his form back in the domestic tournament and the big bash there, as you would all know. Uh, Brad Haddon, uh, he showed uh, some glimpses there against England. And then they have, I, I think it's, it's one of the, uh, I, even though, you know, it's uh, too early to say that, but I think James Faulkner uh, would probably develop as one of the uh, world's uh, best all-rounders, no doubt about it, because he's such a wonderful package. Uh, and then uh, the, they would be contending with the pace of uh, Mitchell Stark, uh, who uh, really, really, uh, really, really swung England um, uh, in, 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 a, in a wonderful fashion, swung the England wickets out. And then Pat Cummins, uh, who ramps up the pace, and uh, he would be something uh, pretty hot to handle for the Indians. And then uh, they have the left-arm spinner, Xavier Doherty. Now, uh, let's have a look at India. For India... Uh, as you know, Mahindra Singh Dhoni was uh, had retired after the test matches, so Mahindra Singh Dhoni renews the battle with Australia. Uh, he's the one who's leading the side, we all know about that. And India, well, uh, it would be interesting to see. I mean, uh, India has a very um, a correct combination uh, of Shikhar Dhawan and Rohit Sharma opening the innings, and there's been a very, very successful combination as far as one-day internationals are concerned. Uh, then they have uh, Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli, well, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, he's, he's another person uh, for India. For India, the man in red-hot form is Virat Kohli, already reeled off uh, four centuries like uh, uh, like Stephen Smith in Test matches. Uh, already, both of them already created a record. So Virat Kohli uh, would be raring to go. Ajinkya Rahane has been uh, on this tour of Australia, has looked uh, very much uh, accomplished. He has, he's, he's more and more playing like an accomplished batsman. And Ajinkya Rahane, as you know, he loves to play his strokes. Uh, and uh, that also really strengthens. And then Suresh Raina, uh, even though he was given an opportunity in the test matches, uh, really faltered. But let me tell you, no, make no mistake here, because Suresh Raina is a completely, he's a, uh, he's a real one-day specialist, and I'm sure uh, there are some strokes to come from Suresh Raina uh, in the one-day international series. Uh, and he also bowl, as you all know. Dhoni, we all know uh, how he actually uh, taunts the ball uh, and uh, what a what a uh, dangerous player he is for the opposition. And then uh, we have some good all-rounders uh, in the in form of two good all-rounders. One is uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. Uh, we all know that he is a good all-rounder. He already proved himself. But Akshar Patel is the one to really watch for because Akshar Patel uh, is one who has uh, really really um, uh, done all the hard work and reached this level. And Akshar Patel, let me tell you. Uh, he's a wonderful player. Uh, the IPL, that is the way he actually made his mark uh, and uh, entered the international cricket uh, by playing some very nice innings. In fact, he also did it against Sri Lanka, as you would remember. So he's not only a batsman, he's more of a bowler, but he's a very good lower order batsman who could be developed as a very good all-rounder uh, like probably Ravi Chandran Ashwin. So Akshar Patel um, is a very good left-arm spinner, uh, can really keep the runs down. It would be a good battle between the left arm spinner Akshar Patel and the Australian batsman. Uh, and then we have, and as you know, and another thing for Akshar Patel would be on Australian pitches, uh, you have bounce that would really help him. And uh, Akshar Patel also, uh, let's, let's remember that Akshar Patel is a tall bowler. Uh, he is he's tall too, so he can really get some good bounce. Uh, and to be, I, I would be really, really loving to see Akshar Patel um, uh, bowled against to the Australian batsman and see how Australian batsmen actually negotiate him because he'll be getting some good bounce with his... Uh, uh, height uh, that he uh, has and he could generate some very good bounce there. And then we have the pace uh, bowling uh, where it would be Mom and Shami and they're all very good one day bowlers. Bhuvneshwar Kumar in particular uh, starts off very well. In fact, um, um, Dhoni uh, normally uh, what he does is uh, he, he loves to actually uh, see how Bhuvneshwar Kumar goes and I thought Dhoni uh, handles uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar uh, pretty well. What he does is he immediately tosses up the ball to him and he sees that Bhuvneshwar Kumar is really uh, making the batsman work, uh, he really tries to get the full quota out for Bhuvneshwar Kumar because he's pretty good with the uh, new ball. And even with the old ball, Bhuvneshwar Kumar can do something. But uh, as far as old, um, as far as new ball is concerned, I think Mohamed Shami and Umesh Yadav would be uh, pretty sharp uh, with the Australian on the Australian pitches, no doubt about that. So all in all, uh, I think we are in for some exciting fare coming up at the uh, Melbourne Cricket Ground. Um, I'm, I'm told there's going to be a lot of pace and bounce, so it'll be very interesting to see. And, uh, well, let me tell you, dear friends, fans and subscribers, uh, uh, be very happy uh, that the forecast uh, at the Melbourne, at the, uh, at the MCG, uh, is uh, pretty good. And uh, we are definitely going to have a full house there, no doubt, with the public holiday uh, in, uh, in Australia. And uh, we are going to have some exciting fare coming up at the MCG in the second match of the Carlton Mid-Tri Series. 
uh, and uh, I really can't wait to actually uh, go and actually watch it. Uh, well, dear fans, uh, friends and subscribers, uh, uh, that really puts a lid on my uh, cricket happening show today. Uh, thanks, for your, uh, th thanks for your company uh, and uh, thanks for your uh, tremendous support to the cricket show. Your host Ram will see you tomorrow with all those matches uh, of this uh, particular match between India uh, and Australia which will be happening today. Until then, it's goodbye from your host Ram Studios. Thank you.